Zhou Wenxi, also known as the Queen of C-Pop, is a Taiwanese singer, songwriter, dancer, and actress who has captivated audiences with her mesmerizing performances and unique style. Since 2003, every album Jolin Tsai released has been the year's highest-selling album by a female artist. Tsai was born on September 15, 1980, in Sinchuan City, Taipei County, Taiwan. Her maternal grandmother was a Taiwanese indigenous Papua people. Tsai got her start in the business by competing in a singing contest organized by MTV in 1998 while still a senior at Taipei Jingmei Girls High School. She beat out 3,000 entrants to take the top prize with renditions of songs by Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston in English. After that, Universal arranged a series of courses for her for half a year, including dance classes twice a week to help her improve her stage performance, makeup classes twice a week to help her do her own makeup when she was pressed for schedules or in between brief interviews, and speech training classes to help her cope with the media. In addition, Universal arranged for her to fly to Ireland and the United States to watch live performances of foreign singers. And then she recorded her first album, Jolin 1019, a year later as a freshman at Fujian Catholic University. Tsai, with her fresh appearance in Sugary Songs, was quickly nicknamed the Teenage Boy Killer. She pumped out an average of an album a year in the following years that included such classics as I Know You Are Sad and Do You Still Love Me? But it wasn't until her 2003 album Magic that she really hit stardom. The album, made with the help of top flight producers such as Jay Cho, reflected a broadening of her musical repertoire with such songs as Prague Square. Tsai's personal journey during those years, however, remained firmly entrenched within the framework of mainstream values. She said, What I was aiming for in the past was kind of like taking a test, I was hoping not to make any mistakes on anything I was taught. If even the smallest problem occurred, I would cry when I got off stage, confiding that she was so nervous and uptight that anything unexpected or out of the ordinary would send her to the brink of collapse. Chin Hung Yu, a project planner for Street Voice International, a domestic music platform said this about her. She had baby fat, so she made sure when she first got started to avoid gaining weight. She spent her time eating only foods not cooked in fats and worked really hard when practicing her dancing or shooting music videos. She was kind of silly and didn't sound terribly smart when she spoke. Chin, who headed the Special Projects Department of Universal Music Taiwan when it released Sai's first three albums and booked appearances for her, describes young Jolin as trying too hard, to the point where people at the record company felt bad for her. She was the company's new star, but she received just as much criticism as she did praise. What's remembered is when she called herself an acquired talent in a 2007 documentary of the same name. I cannot accept quitting before having learned something well, and I have to reach 130, on a scale of 100, before I can allow people to deduct points were among her best known quotes to the media at the time. She was seemingly expending all of her effort fighting herself, unable to find inner peace even when scoring victories. Music industry veteran Elaine Sung said, Jolin Tsai's unwillingness to admit defeat was something of a gamble. She never studied dance, and there were doubts whether her body could achieve the flexibility and strength needed to attain the desired results but she persevered despite the possibility of falling short, unwilling to settle for simple dance moves that could still resonate with fans. In 2007 at the 18th Golden Melody Awards, Sai won the award for Best Mandarin Female Singer for her album Dancing Diva, still seen today as an unprecedented victory for a singer's dynamism and performance skills. Even the jury cited her all-around talent and hard work as reasons for awarding her the prize. But the media like always were bashing her saying even a gymnast can win a Golden Melody Award, trying to diminish her achievements. Sai said, at that time, I didn't have a lot of confidence. When others doubted me, it seemed like I wasn't able to speak up for myself. My mindset was very negative, feeling that I hadn't pushed for the award to begin with, unable to find anything good about herself in her heart, Sai even felt bad when others projected their glances at her. By 2009, exhausted and emotionally broken, Tsai wanted to get out of the music business. 
Nobody enjoys repeating their actions, and Sai was convinced she wanted to try something new. Casting a shadow over her future, however, was her sense of being boxed in and liking herself less and less. So she decided to drop everything and take a break for three months, heading to Canada to study French. Actually, it was my agent, at the time, Ko Fu Hung, who didn't give up on me. She encouraged me to continue, and I felt a little more relaxed after my break. So I didn't overthink things after that, that same year, Sai and Ko co-founded Eternal Music Production Company, in effect making Sai her own boss and giving her far more opportunity to influence her musical future. It was around 2010 when Sai stopped fighting herself and instead began to do battle with the mainstream music market. Eight of the ten songs on the album she released that year, Myself, were dance songs, further reflecting her increasingly distinctive personality. That wasn't entirely because I wanted to do something different from everybody else. Rather, I found some things in dance music that were like me. I could very confidently make judgments about the music and then add things from my experiences gained over time, the album sold more than 65,000 copies in Taiwan, becoming the year's highest selling album by a female artist and the year's fourth highest selling album overall in the country. The music video of the track Honey Trap was nominated for Golden Melody Award for Best Music Video. On November 15, 2014, Tsai released her 13th studio album, Play. The album included songs like Play, I Am Not Yours and We're All Different, yet the same. The album broke away from the framework of previous Chinese albums, with rich contents and all-encompassing themes. It received critical acclaim from music critics, and was credited with introducing the world to the high standard of Chinese dance music. The album sold more than 85,000 copies in Taiwan, becoming the year's highest-selling album by a female artist and the year's fourth-highest-selling album overall in the country. It was nominated for a total of 10 Golden Melody Awards, becoming one of the albums with the most Golden Melody Award nominations in history. To me personally, it's her best album, through this album I found out about her and to this day I enjoy listening. Producer Starchin said this about Jolin Tsai. She works on the songs at home until she's mastered them, kind of like for the title track of the album play. She had never performed such dense lyrics where there was no place to pause and catch her breath, the producer, who usually reserves about 8 hours of recording time per song for the average singer, was dumbfounded when he learned the recording studio had only been booked for 3 hours to record Play's title track. Sai was so well prepared, however, that 3 hours was enough to get the song done. As well, Jolin Sai has used her platform to champion for LGBTQ rights throughout her career and she has become among the most notable icons that support the issue. We're all different, yet the same is one of the most pointed ones, as it depicts the hardships of a same-sex relationship that does not have equal legal rights. She said this in one of her interviews. I have many LGBTQ friends and fans, and many of these music videos and songs were made to share their real-life stories and real emotions. I see myself as a platform, through which these stories can be told as songs, so that people can learn to treat relationships or live, as that are, differently from their own with a calm attitude. Everyone has his, her ups and downs, tears and laughter regardless of gender and sexual orientation. For example, the story of We're All Different, yet the same is a real-life story I heard from the director, Les Chin. I was very moved and sad when I heard it. I really hope my friends will never have to deal with the same difficult situation again, so I turned it into a song and a music video, hoping this will make people face the sad reality. I also hope one day such heartbreaking stories can be stopped from happening again. As well, during play era producer Chin found her different, more confident. It felt like she was no longer overly critical of herself because she knew she was good enough. She didn't insist on seeing every take, he says. Even if we used lighting to give her personality rather than to make her look pretty, and her face ended up with a purplish blue tint, she was okay with that. In 2016 and 2017 she recorded songs with Western artists like Alesso and Hardwell. On December 26, 
2018, Psy released her 14th studio album, Ugly Beauty. It returned to the inner level of the singer herself, with the theme of breaking the secular beauty standard and exploring the inner psychological polarity. It was generally praised by music critics, who said that the concept of the album was complete and unified. The album became the highest-selling album of 2019 overall in Taiwan. The song Wong Li in this album commemorates a Taiwanese teenager who was found in a lived in a school toilet after being bullied by classmates for his feminine appearance, is nearly always included in her shows, and has become an anthem for the island's LGBTQ community. People love her not only for this but and also how she found her confidence and now is able to get back at critics. In 2019, Jolin Tsai fired back at the Taiwanese media outlet Mirror Media. The company ran photos that she had taken while celebrating her birthday in Pattaya, Thailand with a headline that focused on her breasts. They also drew attention to her sitting position, adding that it could lead to accidental exposure. Jolin Tsai responded with a Facebook post that asked when a series of articles mentions the G-cup breasts in the headline, what type of S education is received by readers? Her response drew support from netizens and even Taiwan's education ministry, who said that it was time to revise the S education curriculum. One of her ugly beauty concert outfits made netizens do a double take as it seemed as though her nipples were clearly visible from the sexy, high-slit dress, for which she got backlash for. However, her manager came forward to explain that the dress visual effects were created with a 3D scanning of a body and it wasn't Jolin Tsai's actual body in full display. As well, Tsai reportedly joked during the concert by asking fans if there was anyone looking at my face? Or are you looking at my assets? Also, Tsai wants to help everybody become more empathetic to those in society who are different from themselves. Too often today people posting messages online don't know that they're hurting others. I want to protect my fans and tell them that even if they are different from others, they are not fragile or insignificant, perhaps I was hurt by public opinion more than even she lets on, but now, bursting with confidence, she cares about social issues. Her agent Tom Wong said. She feels responsibility as an entertainer, the responsibility a performer has on stage. I think that originated with her empathy and knowing how it feels to go through hard times, we need more people like her, her story is really inspiring. Thank you for watching and see you next time.